Hello everyone. Before we continue, I thought it's a good idea if we just quickly uh, talk about decimation and I show you um, quickly how we use the quad draw tool in Maya. Because I think some of you, like I used to be, might be confused. One thing, first of all, why did we do decimation in ZBrush before? Well, um, we did it because decimation, um, simply said, is we decimate the geometry. So we remove some of the geometry so the model is not as heavy, but we preserve the detail which we want to use afterwards so we can literally draw on that high poly model and create a low poly model. You might be confused what's low poly and high poly because we talked about it before. Let's import these models again. Oh, where is my export photo? There we are, Pascal. Oh, there we are. So, um, I think it was this one, Pascal Body Low Poly FBX export. Let's have a look. Yes, it's this one. So what we have here is, that's the high poly. Let me F on the keyboard so we can zoom in. Yeah. Okay, let's hide the floor for the time being. So this is our high poly. I'll pull it out so you can see the difference. And come on, there we are. I'll put the shortcut keys for navigation and everything uh, in Maya afterwards in the video as well. Uh, if I select my high poly, then shift, select, click on my low poly. Well, you can see the difference. This is low poly. It doesn't have that much geometry. This is high poly. And this is a decimated high poly. We decimated it once. And even with once, I think uh, my computer was struggling when we were using the quadro tool. You will see later on in the next videos uh, because it needs to do so, so many calculations as well. And the quadro tool, I believe it's heavy on the computer. So at some point, I think I moved on to my stronger machine, which I use usually for rendering. But that's the difference. Low poly, shift select the low poly. The high poly, shift select the low poly. And then you can see the difference. So we like, for animation and games, we like working with low poly, don't we? Because, okay, come on Z, to undo whatever I did. So if I show you, for example, on this low poly one, it's, if I go to vertex, even this low poly is quite heavy for um, animations and stuff, but it's easier. Let's say we want to start closing the eyelids on top. Yeah, well, that's not a very good example. Come on, Z, come on, Z, come on, Z, until you undo everything. Let's get the um, edge F on the keyboard so we can zoom in and center kind of, because otherwise it goes like flipping around. And my um, pivot is not centered here, but I just quickly want to show you. It's easier to, to manipulate those edges or let's say faces. Yeah, see, easier. Well, what happens if I go to the high poly? Can I do that? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> but why do we do um, what we do? <laughs> Sorry. The high poly has all the details that we want. And um, not in this project, but probably in the next one, I will show you, I mean, like, as a, as a next project, as another character. Um, we use low poly and high poly for um, texturing maps. But that's another subject to um, cover later on because it's so much information. So I don't want to uh, confuse even more now. What I want to uh, show you for now is how we use the high poly and just talk a little bit more about the quad draw tool. So for the next video, you're a little bit more prepared for the retopology. You will see what we call retopology. So if I go back to object mode, 
and I select my high poly and then I go to my sticking tool which is this one to make the object live so you see once you go back on it it's like kind of green so if I switch it off, this off it's normal selection green but if I switch this on means that this one is ready to be drawn on okay so let's go to quad draw tool turn around option on my keyboard and my pen option is out in windows so we go to my high poly let's hide the low poly it's distracting me there come on h on the keyboard to hide okay well what we can do is well, now my other keyboard is working all we can do is, well, let's leave the eyes there. <laughs> okay, so we can literally, this is on, there we are, quadro two is on, and let's do it. And what we usually do is we start only half and then we mirror. So what I would start usually with in the next videos you will see. So we're putting the dots there where we want them, then shift on the keyboard, to make a face and then with when the mouse is like this you can move see you can move literally the vertices because these are vertices if you if I come closer you can see these are the vertices there vertices am I pronouncing it properly never mind you know what I mean so I don't like having it on all the time and edges for example if I want to extrude by the way all the shortcut keys are here see keyboard mouse shortcuts expand this and you can see all the shortcut keys for the quadro tool so uh, just a quick go through tab and when you have the edge it says to you extrude so you can extrude that face and then we can do it again and then we can do it here as well. You can do whole um, line as well, extrude the whole line. I like working with single ones and I like, most of the time, uh, you will see, I like placing my dots because sometimes it's a bit easier rather than extruding the whole edge or something, especially these areas around the eyes and everything else. So dot, dot, we need to have four vertices, shift, make a face, dot, dot, shift, make a face. If you want to remove a face, let me try to remember which one was it, command shift, maybe? Come on, center. Let's see whether it was command shift. No, it needs to be yellow. Let's have a look here. Mm, I've forgotten, you know, once you don't use it, and then until you get control shift low left mouse button. So it's control shift left or the pen tip, and it selects it as yellow. You can either del delete a face or you can even delete the whole edge. Yeah, makes sense. What else? Uh, here you can do lo loops as well, but I'm not very fond of those. Mm, I think this is the basic ones. Um, I will copy all those and I will put them in um, in the comments of the video as well. So basically, that's the um, the quadro tool. What we like doing is shift to combine them. And sometimes you would notice that it's not gonna, you see, it's not gonna allow you, and that's because of that detail. So sometimes you just need to kind of Turn around, get the right angle, and just keep drawing there. And you will see that the more you draw, look how it's getting, uh, it's delayed a little bit. Well, that's what happens with the quadro tool. It's heavy on, um, on the computer. And that's why uh, for the decimated geometry, First of all, if you don't decimate that geometry and you export what we had on the highest subdivision level in ZBrush, 
Uh, first, it's going to take uh, a bit longer. It depends on the power of the, the computer that you're working on. First, it's going to take a bit longer to export. Second, importing it into Maya is going to take quite a long time as well, if the model is not decimated. So the less geometry you have, the better. But we need to still make sure that we've got that detail when we're retopologizing, even though, um, to be honest, I wasn't using that detail afterwards for the retopology. But nevertheless, that's the way. <laughs> okay, let me know if you want me to do another video for, for this. But basically, that's the Quadro tool. And uh, that's the, the tool that I use in Maya for retopologizing and everything else. So I will... See you in the next video. Thank you.